update with modern artillery. Easton at Salt Lake is going out after the land speed record held by our editor since 1928. His huge racer Thunderbolt is being tuned up for her trials on Bonville Flats. Her enormous gallonage of petrol is being pumped into her and the 16 tyres are being thoroughly tested for their debut on salt. So Malcolm Campbell has said on this screen that the dried salt surface has added a new lease of speed to record attempts. This is borne out by Thunderbolt's first results. She exceeded Bluebird's record of 301 but the figures of 309.1 miles an hour couldn't be registered as official because more than an hour intervened between the two stipulated runs of one measured mile in each direction. King Leopold of the Belgians, who will be paying a state visit to Britain this month, goes on manoeuvres with his army. Following his father's tradition as a soldier, he participates in the exercises at Namur, and like his father, he looks a soldier. At Anne, he is the first to cross a pontoon bridge built by Belgian sappers over the River Meuse. Already there are other royal visitors in London. The King and Queen of Bulgaria are travelling strictly incognito as Count and Countess Rilski. But it is said that King Boris may discuss trade relations between Britain and Bulgaria at the Foreign Office. Who hasn't heard of the Mauritania? At Birkenhead, a new Murray is rising from the stocks to take her place among the giants of the ocean and carry on the great traditions of her namesake which for 22 years held the blue ribbon of the Atlantic. The new vessel, which was laid down in May of this year, is not, of course, the sister ship to the Queen Mary, which is building on Clydeside. Inside, she will be more comparable to her famous predecessor. 750 feet long, tonnage 30,000. But in design, notably in her two large funnels, she will be very different. At present, she's just Cunard White Star number 1029. To St. Martin in the fields come thousands of people of all degrees to pay tribute to the late Canon Shepherd. He saw war, he worked for peace, and offered true comfort and a sincere message to all who heard him. An outstanding personality, he was to his countless friends, just Dick Shepard. A German airman is trying out his novel machine at Cologne. It is in effect a pair of rigid wings without body or tail. Towed aloft by another plane, this machine flies under its own power if necessary, but it's been tested for stability, so it glides. A striking picture of the machine in flight before a faultless landing on its single wheel completes a successful experiment. The Duce is all smiles today, birthday smiles, for it's yet another anniversary of his famous march on Rome and the birth of fascism. A hundred thousand people have gathered for the celebration and German delegates look on while they cheer. Massed bands catch the spirit of jubilation with the Giovinezza. At St. James's Palace, the Duke of Gloucester taking a salute. Rain forces the troops to wear greatcoats, and the climax of the ceremony has to take place indoors. I commit the new colours to your keeping, in all confidence that you will have hold them untarnished, as in the past, as emblems of the great name and tradition of the Royal Irish Fusiliers. A few years ago, it was intended that the Royal Irish Fusiliers should be disbanded, but the order was revoked. Now the regiment receives its new colours, no longer to be carried into battle, but still the symbol of soldierly duty and valour. At Le Zoological Garden de Vincennes, you understand French, of course. Les animaux sont uh, amusing themselves. Especialement le monkey. Well, you watch while I think of some more French. Oh, 
la la. Uh, pardon. Maintenant, il mange. Uh, now he's eating his dinner. But that wasn't what I had to tell you. It's autumn at uh, Le Zoo, and Les animaux are getting cold. Quand il promenade, they have to wear Le Macintosh. And Le Vet, he take uh, Le Temperature. Deep need uh, in, Monsieur. Bon. It's a headdress in an old-fashioned frame. A good place for it, some people think, for these things have been causing controversy, in spite of which the headdress is making headway in fashion, breaking out in spots or fitting closely like a Juliet cap. What exactly is a headdress? Ah, there we begin to get involved. Sometimes it's just feathers, or rather plumes. Roughly speaking, it's the answer to the riddle, when is a hat not a hat, when it's a headdress. While no woman would attempt to wear a hat with an evening gown, headdresses have been seen at the dinner tables of exclusive restaurants, and the restaurant managers have objected, which was the cause of the controversy. Headdresses were very fashionable in the spacious days of Edward VII. They gave added dignity to the stately bow of famous hostesses. Something in our own line at last, Doris. A bun's eye view of Burton on Trent. And it's just after dinner time in the country of Sweet Malton Ops. Good. With the soft music of the pneumatic drills in your ears and a gentle conversation of the Midland and to help, why, a drop of shut eye comes natural to a gentleman. Perhaps she wonders what the blooming drills is bursting ourselves for, Horace. Well, I'll tell you. It ain't altogether a secret. Last year, Father Christmas comes down this here chimbley by mistake. So they're blowing it up in good time, so the old codger won't miss his beer this Christmas. It's the tallest chimbley in England, and that's how he come to make the mistake. Well, that's all I gotta say, so come on, better have it done. Cool, blimey, I forgot he was there. Wasn't it lucky, Horace, that we got the slow motion handy, so he'd he managed to get out from under? <laughs> <laughs> 